Or as the movie said, if you build it, we will come. <laughs> the permits are the only flag that we have to get out to properties to review the listing and the condition of the property. So at some point in time, it may have been 20 or 30 years ago, a county appraiser was on site to look at that property. But unless we have permit records, we have no other cause to revisit those properties other than to do an occasional ride through as we're checking some of the other new construction in the area. Okay, I have six appraisers who work for me and we've got 350 some odd thousand properties to appraise. So how is it that a computer is not doing it? Well, it, it is, but it's a human being, a rational person with a lot of knowledge and experience an understanding of the area that he or she is appraising who is making those inputs into our mass appraisal system. Uh, the Mecklenburg Times has asked me a lot about the effect of traffic on neighborhoods. We actually do, our appraisers do a study of how traffic impacts properties that face a busy street versus interior properties. So we, these guys who are working these neighborhoods have ridden the neighborhoods, they've got years of experience in listing and appraising property in those neighborhoods, and they're making the judgment calls of what data is input in order to get those value outputs. <coughs> my favorite graph <coughs> in the whole slide, because this gets into my little thing that I'm into, because I was an economics guy in college, and what this graph shows you is a history of the American economy basically since the last recession we had, which was the Gulf War recession back in 1990-91. Uh, that was the baseline for this graph. This was compiled by the uh, North Carolina Property Tax Commission. And what it shows is the relative appreciation or depreciation in home prices since that time. I won't go through the whole thing but call your attention to this point right here. This little spike represents the dot-com bubble, if anybody remembers that time, right around 2000, 2001. And then we had the tragedy of the 9-11 event. And after 9-11, the appreciation rate in property prices began to fall as people became frightened demand contracted that had a dampening effect on market prices. But then notice here, from this point to this point, there's one thing we know that was happening during that time frame, and that was that the Federal Reserve pursued a policy of low interest rates in order to stimulate the economy. And one of the things we learn in economics is a policy can have, a, have one positive outcome, but it can have unseen and unexpected consequences. And here's what happened. The low rates stimulated what became an asset bubble in real estate. People who develop property, people who build property, see low rates as an opportunity to acquire money cheaply and engage in long-term projects because one of the things that an interest rate does, and I maintain the interest rate is the single most important variable in understanding how an economy works. What that rate does is it sends a signal to the investor that people are saving their money and that there's going to be demand for goods and services, in this case housing, into the distant future. And so those people began to engage in those development projects. But what an, an artificially low interest rate signals to a buyer is, now is the time. I need to go ahead and take advantage of these rates while I can. So, if you can imagine the future out here on this graph, all the future demand for real estate that was waiting out here gets pushed up into the present. It's almost like a, a, a tsunami of that. That's the dynamics of the, of the housing bubble. That's how that came about. Rates had to go up eventually. 
developers and builders began to realize their mistake, that they had started projects they couldn't finish. I walk past one all the time uptown, condominium complex with plastic flapping in the, in the windows. It's been like that for years now. People are unemployed when those projects have to be stopped. Consumer demand ends because people have already made their purchase decisions and they have debt that they're trying to service and you have a bust in the real estate market. And that's, that's where we've been since that time. These spikes in the graph here, which represent just the last year and a half, show us where stimulus programs were enacted to try to reinflate property values. You've been involved with the $8,000 first-time buyer tax credits. Those caused upticks that brought prices back, but all it did for the county appraisal staff was create a wavy moving target for us as we're trying to figure out where we're going to set values for January 1 of 2011. That's, that's our problem. I'm sorry. That's our problem. Where is the market going now? Uh, I guess the best estimate is, um, I think it was Case Shiller. I have to check that, but I believe that, uh, well, it, either, I have to check my source, but the last thing I read was the forecast for the Charlotte market was a, about a 4% drop in real estate prices this year. Well, here's the problem. An appraiser, by definition, cannot forecast value. We have to base our value estimate on historical, empirical, verified data. And this question came up last night during the presentation at the Matthews Community Center. What are you going to do about all this inventory that's sitting out there waiting, the banks are sitting on, it's either going to go into foreclosure, it's going to sell at a lower price. We have to cut our analysis off as of December 31st, 2010, by law, by the book. That's how we do our job. And that, that feeds the conception that you're holding the values up here when they're really going to be here. And I don't deny that. I, I believe the market will continue its correction until it weeds out all the malinvestment from the real estate bubble. But we can't project our value estimates into the future. We have to stop and give a, an appraised value effective January 1 of 2011. <laughs> Probably the most confusing two slides in the presentation. These were put together to show the county commissioners and Charlotte City Council how we've been tracking some of the median sale price changes around the county uh, since the last revaluation. Let me just say these percentages here do not represent a percentage increase in property value. These percentages indicate the, the number of residential parcels represented by the market area. Just to give you one example, S1 is the area of Myers Park, Dilworth, Eastover. Okay, S1 has just over 14% of all the residential property in the county. And then these <laughs> columns just show changes in the median sell price over time. It does not indicate what all property values have been doing in those areas, but just that middle number. And from your classes, you know that appraisers never use the mean. We don't use an average because then we're assigning equal weight to every observation in the data. We use the median because it excludes the outliers. So no inference can be made about what every property in that area, where it has been and where it's going to be. It just simply shows relative changes in the market since that time. We brought that into the second third quarters of 2010, and we're right now compiling the 2000, excuse me, the fourth quarter 2010 data. I will tell you that to our surprise, in about half of those market areas, we've actually seen the median price go up in the fourth quarter, but I expect that to drop as we go into 2011. Again, 
Don't infer anything by a change in the median sale price. For example, this change here in N2, what that's telling us is the lower end properties are not selling as much. The sales activity is in the higher end of the range and it's pushing that median up. So please, please, please don't take you know, spy photos from back there with those little cameras and stuff. And go out and tell people. I, I, and I, I'll be very frank with you. I have hated presenting this slide at the public presentations because property owners, they fixate on this. And they see the median and they're thinking about their own property. Well, my property's not worth $225,000. So, but, it's, but it is part of the presentation. And again, it just shows that we are tracking the data as, as rapidly as we can. Now, I referred earlier to the median assessment ratio, which helps us get an indication of what property values are doing in a general way, neighborhood by neighborhood. That's very simple. Take the current assessed value, which is a 2003 value assessment of the median sale in that neighborhood and divide it by its actual sale price, and that gives you an assessment ratio. So what that means is, in a neighborhood where property values have been on the increase, the assessed value is going to be something less than the actual sale price it's divided by. So assessment ratio will fall in neighborhoods that have sale price appreciation. Does that make sense? Do you need me to go back to that previous slide? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. There we go. All right, let me see if I can illustrate this. Because what I'm going to do momentarily is show you a, a map that you won't be able to read that shows some of the assessment ratios around the county as they currently stand. Assessed value here is the 2003 assessed value. In other words, the current value. Divided by the actual current sale price. So we're looking for the median sale in a neighborhood excluding the outliers, that middle sale divided into the current 2003 sale price. So we're not putting the new values out here. Okay? When you divide that number, you get an assessment to sale ratio. Now, now watch. If property values have been appreciating in a neighborhood, in other words, the sale prices are on the upward trend. This number will be greater than this number. Therefore, the ratio will be less than 100%. Okay? In a neighborhood where the reverse is true, where selling prices are down, have fallen below what we assessed the property for back in 2003, this number will be greater than this number, therefore the assessment ratio will be greater than 100. So it's almost counterintuitive. A low assessment ratio means prices on the increase. A high assessment ratio means prices on the fall. Okay? Sorry, guys. Noisy. All right. And here, I, here I've got some verbiage that really explains what I just what I just told you. Where prices have increased, the ratio falls to a number below 100 percent. Where sales have remained relatively unchanged, that ratio stays close to 100 percent. And where prices have fallen since 2003, that ratio will be greater than 100.